My wife's questioning my sanity. Why do I want to go across six different time zones to probably the coldest place I've ever been, other than the North Pole, uh, to a mine that most people are saying is gone. It's finished. It's, in fact, if it hasn't finished, it's on its way out. And kind of that is the point. I need to go. I need to see it. Um, because nobody's ever been, nobody's ever filmed it, no Western has ever taken a photograph of the mine. I need to know what the truth is. And, and normally, if I've not been somewhere, one of my team have, or some close friends have, none of us have, so it's important that somebody's there, documents it, and sees what chrome dioxide is really all about. planning this trip for quite some years now and uh, we're literally 24 hours away of getting to Siberia. We've stopped off in Moscow, we've been to see some of the sites, I've always wanted to see the, especially the uh, Alexandrovsky Gardens have been a, a real treasure, a real delight. We've been just outside the Kremlin, Red Square, St Basil's, the most incredible uh, looking buildings and really has exceeded every expectation I ever had of Moscow. But now's the big day, we're flying overnight now to Siberia and we'll see you shortly. So from the airport to Aldan, it was about a five hour drive. Uh, we just dropped the luggage off, brushed the teeth because we've been traveling for almost 24 hours. And now about a two hour drive from Aldan up to the mine. And uh, dirt track come tarmac, tarmac come dirt track. And as Eugene said, uh, it's not roads, just directions. During the long car journey, I was reflecting on how many amazing different gemstones come from this wonderful country. And what have you got here? Uh, yeah. This uh, is this is not from the mine. Not, not, no. not. It's, it is different region okay. of our big country. Okay. It's astrophyllite. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, it is, I've never seen it, it in the rough before. Yes, wow. It, it is very wonderful uh, mineral, and uh, this mineral are uh, deposits of this mineral is on the north of our country, northeast uh, of our country, on the Baltic, uh, the Baltic Sea shore. Oh wow! This is Charoite. Charoite, yeah. Charoite. I love this gemstone. On the north, it is not far from uh, chrome dioxide. Yep. Um, uh, in ugly deposits. Yep. Yep. Uh, on the uh, south of Yakutia, Sakha Yakutia. Yeah. Uh, on on the river of Chara, Chara and. Uh, uh, this mineral, this yeah. rock was named Charoid. We stopped off in the Zahat Yakutia region to take a look at some amazing pieces of Charoite. This is a fantastic location where we get this incredible gemstone from. The actual region is known as Zahat Yakutia, uh, famous for this incredible gemstone. Its colours are this mauve almost amethyst purple, deep purple, but it's got these lovely feathery veins and it's a gemstone we don't see very often on television, but when we do see it, try and get hold of it. Seeing these amazing gemstones and where they come from was an absolute joy. And again, it was something that not anyone I know of in the industry has had the pleasure of seeing with their own eyes, but the best was yet to come. We set back off to continue to the chrome dioxide mine. On the way, Eugene wanted to give me the opportunity to see the entire landscape and explained how the land had been mined before. The area is known as the Inagli Massif, and mining activity here has been very high in the past for many other minerals. So we're getting close to the mine now, and uh, you showed me a little early on your lovely drawing. So maybe, maybe talk me through it in a bit more detail. Ah, okay, I will explain to you. In this draft, you can see Dunite, yeah. Dunite intrusive, named as uh, Inagli Massif okay. in Russia very famous because it is such a source of platinum. Platinum as well? Platinum, oh, wow. yes. Okay. And on the border is alkaline gabroid. Okay. And in this part of Inagli massive name, yeah. mm -hmm. it is um, chrome diopside metasomatic with pigmatite. And uh, chrome diopside metasomatic rocks located only in this east-south part yeah. okay. of massive. 
it, it's only this part. And I remember you saying in the car that the vein is at maximum 800 meters and varies from sort of three meters to half a meter, the actual yes, vein. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, I, I think till three meters yeah. thickness yeah. of this vein. Yeah. I wanted to see it from a more elevated position. So Dimitri took us up to the top of the valley where we could get a more clear view of the land while we stood high above the mining area. Dimitri was just explaining that the valley floor was where the platinum was. Yeah. And the only place in the valley... Yes, is in right of and left of the yeah. valley, it is only chrome dioxide bodies. Just that one small area here. Yes. So the Inagli River runs, it starts here yeah. and comes down to the valley. Yes. And then the Dunite is all the way around yeah. the outside. Yeah. And this is Dunite we're standing yes. on now. we are standing on Dunite. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're, we're blessed in this area with Mirani mine quite some way this way with diamonds. We're blessed with a platinum, but we're really blessed with a chrome. We needed to move on as we still had a way to go and our time was running out. But during the car ride, something was wrong. Dimitri seemed to be unsure about allowing us to film at his mine. Even with my limited knowledge of Russian, I understood the conversation between Eugene and Dimitri and it wasn't going well. I pleaded my case to Eugene who translated to Dimitri and finally I think he understood what we were trying to achieve. It was a huge relief as to have come this far and not be able to share with you what we had seen would have been a huge disappointment. But after a long journey and much conversation we finally arrived. I didn't know what to expect but as we got out the car and began walking we rounded a corner and there in front of us was this. Just looking at this incredible green chromium dust that covered the landscape was jaw-dropping. It truly is like being on another world. I spent some time looking around and trying to discover some gem quality pieces. You'd think with all this amazing green rock around me that I'd find something fairly quickly. This is the current surface they were working uh, before the, the season ended. And uh, in here looks like a massive uh, chrome. But I've been here for about half an hour. and I could probably cut two or three carrots out of this whole section here. Um, most of it's dust. You can see it all breaking up and flaking up. Um, most of it's dust, but you just find the occasion of it it's going to be fine. hard to find one now, I've said that. You might find the occasional bit that can be cut in faceted. On first impression, you think there's crammed dioxide everywhere, but actually the vast majority of what you see is just dust, pure dust, just like flour. Um, then we get some pieces that are opaque and they're quite nice for beads. But what we've been looking for all day is those glimmering, shining little pieces that we can cut proper gemstones out. And those are very rare indeed. Our time here was very short and our trip had come to an end. We were grateful that we were allowed to visit the mine at all and take away these stunning images. It's a reminder that these precious gemstones come from some of the most beautiful and remote locations on Earth. Sad that the journey was over, but delighted with the memories and experience that will live with us forever. Much like the precious chrome dioxide from Russia. Mm -hmm.